Welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper Angle Corner. We have June starting as the Blue Protoss. Bottom left hand corner, we have Gypsy starting as the Brown Terran. This is going to be on Eclipse, and this was labeled as the Super Ace. So I believe Gypsy's team ended up losing the first set, ended up winning the second set, and now this is the Super Ace between Jayun and Gypsy to follow. And I'm wondering if this is played immediately after the last match. Again, this is maybe my it's in my top five for sure. I think it's number two again behind Future and 80 Small at the moment, but this is one of my favorite rivalries in StarCraft. And again, I said it several times, I feel like they elevate each other's play. Jayun getting caught last match Really, I think being a little bit too greedy. He sat on two gateways for a very... Uh, he had three Nexus up, was sitting on two gateways for a very, very long period of time, and then grabbed a fourth Nexus on top of it. I think just assuming or hoping that Gypsy... Ooh, that was interesting. Lost 33 minerals right there. That can slow things down a bit for Gypsy. I'm wondering what the can't, if that was a misclick or what. Um, regardless, it's not game-ending, but it's, it's certainly annoying. But uh, but anyway, I'm wondering if we're going to see a repeat of Game 1 or if Jayun's going to play a little bit more cautious. He's not grabbing the Assimilator this time, so which suggests maybe this is kind of a decision on Eclipse to go ahead and get an initial Zealot out there because it is a two-player map. You know exactly where your opponent is. Gypsy going ahead and building a barracks right alongside that command center. He'll have to move it later to build that comps out. But this is kind of that wall <clears throat> where he's he's leaving his front door a bit open. But he can go ahead and kind of move the Marines along those two lanes. I think it's just the, yeah, on one lane, because I think it's blockaded otherwise. Barracks is a, a full seal comparatively along the edge there. Gateway moving up. We do have an SEV moving out. Are we going to see initial Zealot? Jayun actually going one gate, skipping the Zealot, going one gate into Nexus. Wow. More greedy plays here. Skipping the first salt, skipping the assimilator. This isn't exactly a 12 nexus, but it's something close. And it might even look like a 12. Here's the thing. By the way this warps in, this might look like a 12 nexus to Gypsy. But the gateway was up a little bit faster. Let's see if he plops down a second gateway to follow things up. And now the question is, is how does Gypsy dis respond? It looks like he's going to go ahead and grab his own command center not that long after. And he's actually even going to skip marine production in response to this. A probe actually doing a pretty good job harassing this initial SCV. Here's the thing. The Also, the counter thing. Here's the thing. I wanted to say that a lot this match, apparently. Is, so grabbing that assimilator is, is going for that natural expansion with all of this stuff built on the high ground. Without a bunker on the front, which is being built right now, the Zealot might be able to accomplish more than it usually would be able to accomplish. So keep in mind there is one fewer Marine. This is going to be really close. And actually, I think that Zealot might even be able to run by this bunker on the corner because this isn't a front door seal. So one Marine in the bunker. Keep in mind, it does not have range. The Zealot making its way forward. Is there going to be a second Zealot behind this? No, just a single Zealot. Cybernetic score warping. And the Zealot, at the very least, is going to be able to provide a lot of scouting information. <clears throat> so seeing this initially, looks like it is going to just go for... Oh, nice SEV block by Gypsy to try to negate this. <clears throat> Zealot still trying to take out... does take out that SEV. Looking to walk in the main. Doing a little bit of damage to these Marines. Trying to abuse that high ground... Advantage a third marine being produced walks in sees that refinery sees the the marine This is the marines the SCV in refinery and it looks like basically what this is is this is like a super scout Big beefy SC uh, big beefy probe comparatively. It's like the probe graduates into a zealot like in some almost able to get a, an additional marine kill right there And now that barracks gonna go ahead and lift off and provide a bit more manor I missed it a manor engineering bay in the meantime from gypsy inside the natural expansion to go ahead and blockade a lot of the probes away from that mineral line to slow down Jayun's economy. And keep in mind, he can cancel this a little bit later to get a refund. eBay is really a huge building, isn't it? Might be. Is it the largest building in... Is there a larger building? I mean, technically, factories... Factory's pretty sizable, right? It, it can cover a lot of surface area, but engineering bay is just gigantic. Anyway, second assimilator being grabbed <coughs> for Jayun. He's got two gateways up. Let's see if he's going to go for two gateway robo. Still uh, working on range as well. It looks like there's that cancellation from Gyp Gypsy. Was able to get a... L Honestly, that that was a lot of mineral patches to be out of service as well. Grabbing two factories. Let's see if he grabs an early... Yeah, grabbing that machine shop. So moving back into more of that similar build. Uh, 
He's building a second engineering bay himself. Let me go ahead and get rid of that down here in this corner. Just trust me, that's what those are. <laughs> engineering bay, I believe, a supply depot. But anyway, Jayun getting some pylons in the front doors and go ahead and pull that dragoon back. This dragoon pushing out initially. The barracks actually floating up. So two dragoons on the front. I don't think Jayun's going to have enough. This is kind of a. I don't know how much of a harassment he's even going to get out, uh, get out of this. Second machine shot before siege check because Gypsy feeling very, very comfortable with this defense. He's got four Marines in that bunker. This is only two Dragoons. It looks like two more Dragoons are going to move up, and it looks like Jayun just going to sit at two gate into third base, trying to make his way, was trying to make his way towards that 12 o'clock location. Range is kicking in. Gypsy already has the SCVs right there. Also respecting potential DT play, so he's got that turret on the front just in case. But that, yeah, this once the siege tank's out, he can go ahead and harass this a little bit. He does need to protect that siege tank along the corner. Actually, is that only, so that is four SCVs. That's weird. It kind of, it's hard to see that third SCV some, for some reason. Barracks overhead. Jayun looking to maybe do a pickoff. But losing a, a bit of Dragoon Shield right there, trying to stutter step in. And Gypsy backing that off, so a little bit of shenanigans right there. Jayun going to go ahead and take his 12 o'clock base, so he's going to go into... Quick third Nexus. And it looks like we're seeing something very similar to game one. Mines and speed are being upgraded. Again, I think this is before Siege Tech even. This is three siege tanks on the front, and I'm wondering if this is going to turn into a very quick push into Jayun with maybe... Uh, see, well, we'll see it. I, I haven't seen this sort of push before, but with the four marines, keep in mind two of them are damaged. Basically four marines, three siege tanks, a handful of vultures, and the upgrades against the quick third. And this is going to be with their handful of dragoons or to head, or, uh, that have gone ahead and spread out. Or if he's just going to allow the vultures to go ahead and do their thing. We'll see momentarily. No, it is going to be a push. And Jayun, not in position to really see it. He has some Dragoons out into the field. I like what Gypsy's doing. This is very clever. He's doing kind of the covert ops ninja sneak around. Dropping some mines in his front so he can't really be counterattacked. And it's going to be Vultures to support. And Siege Tanks and Marines and everything else moving all the way end around. And these Dragoons are extremely spread out all over the place. And this is still, okay, there are three gateways there and a fourth to come. But honestly, I believe Gypsy, by the time Jane realizes this attack is coming, the trap may have already been sprung. And he may not be in position to deal with it. So this is his first look at this attack force. Some vultures getting cut off as far as reinforcements go. But this is not enough Dragoons to fight heads up. And it looks like there are mines planted on that front. Clever play here from Gypsy. A vulture already sneaking into that natural expansion. The rest of the Dragoons flooding forward. And this was a great play from Gypsy overall. Very, very clever. This mine, not, oh, is able to drag into that siege tank. But Jayun, pulling Dragoons from everywhere, still ended up losing all sorts of probes. The probes actually coming off the line trying to defend this. So he was actually able to take out a lot of siege tanks on the front, but still losing all sorts of probes at that natural expansion. The Dragoon trying to deal with that. And more reinforcements in the form of vultures are flooding forward. Some more Dragoons planning, but there it looks like mines are managing to get onto these gateways. The shuttle is kind of trailing it, but I, I guess this is just for spotting purposes. Those two vultures are taken out, but that natural expansion is still not quite defended. The vultures able to sneak in there, plant a handful of mines, and continue to work and get some more damage done. So Jayun's economy getting heavily interrupted here, while Gypsy continuing to sit comfortably on his two bases and macro up. He's going to have a big lead in the overall worker count, he's actually got... He's ahead in supply, which is a lovely place for Terran to be. It looks like that Marine... Actually able to walk through the gap! <laughs> Photon cannon warping in. Is he going to be able to get probe kills in it? Actually, that he's just going to get taps. That was a hero probe right there. Tasted blood. So, a Reaver moving up. Jane's going to have to get something done with this Reaver to kind of push things up. This Observer is going to go ahead and see it. He's going to go ahead... And build a third command center while he's grabbing his additional factories in a huge economic lead. So yeah, Jayun's going to have to do something magical, honestly, with this dropship. And there's already a turret planted there at the natural expansion. There's already a second turret nearby in that back corner. I don't even know that there's an area he can just press through and get this drop done. But he needs to do significant economic damage. Yeah, 
peeling that underneath the corner. The Dragoon's getting dropped right there. Reaver dropping as well. And is it a dud? Trails a great distance, and it is a dud. Not exactly what Jamie wanted to see. Also took a significant amount of damage on this initial Reaver, and that Goliath is able to move in and pick off a weakened shuttle. Things looking desperate for Jayun. He does have three bases, keep in mind, so he can refill in that probe count fairly rapidly. But Gypsy, in the meantime, feeling very, very comfortable with his economy. He's already got that science facility in production. He's already got that third base established. I don't think that Jayun can do anything about this third base going up. So that's going to be three base Terran versus three base Protoss, which gives Gypsy a firm lead. Siege Tank's going to go ahead and fill in that gap. A single Vulture wandering out to the north. I think he just wants to get a look at what sort of defenses are here and kind of get an eye on this defense force. A single Reaver and some Dragoons and Zealots on the front, just planning a handful of mines as well. So peeking in, peeking out. Bunch of factories down. It looks like still sitting on two machine shops, however, and the armory a little bit silent at this stage of things. He does have level one weapons, but with Gypsy's economy and the lead he's got, it would take a lot to flub this. Jayun looking to try to spot and maybe take a fourth. I think Gypsy on top of this, which I think that's what this attack force is for. I don't know that he's going for a front door seal. I think what he's just trying to do is show enough, enough map presence that Jayun doesn't try to sneak an additional base. So he's going to keep that, and he's actually, never mind, maybe he is just going to push up to that 12 o'clock location. So that Vulture seeing the attack forces that were there, he's moving up with the siege tanks he's got. For a second, I thought this was just to go ahead and deny the fourth, but it looks like he is just actually just going to go up with what he's got and try to take out a base. Reaver dropping on the low ground, able to get one shot off the weak out. We can see Shanks Reaver immediately getting plummeted and GG from Jay and he did not just didn't have the economy to stop what Gypsy was fielding. That shows you Gypsy. He's just able to you yeah. Big win. And I think that does it for this set of team battles. Go ahead and check out Gypsy at Gypsy93 on Twitch. And of course Jayun on Twitch TV. Special thanks to Gypsy for getting me all these replays. Really fun matches between these guys. Um, great play altogether. Thanks for listening.